When it comes to framing a traditional structure, there's no better script than House Builder. I'll just go ahead and load that as an extension. House Builder was written by Steve Hurlbut, and the way it works is it has its own tool palette with all of the functionality built in. So just to break this down, we have global settings here. We have floor, wall, gable wall, and then we have the ability to edit the properties of the wall or move a wall. Here's the roof tool, and then here's the window tool. You can then edit the properties of a window, move a window, or delete a window. Here you can add a door, change its properties, move it, or delete it. And here are the credits. So to start this process, I'm going to go into the global settings and set things up the way I like them. I'm going to change the studs to be 2x6s. And I'll also change the default roof pitch to be 4 and 12. OK. Then I'll create my first wall by clicking right here. It has all the defaults that we set up earlier. I'll just click OK. And then I'll click two points to create the wall. I'll make this 26 feet long. And we instantly have a stud wall. This wall is grouped. And if we want to change the properties of the wall, we need to select the group, go here and click on this button, and we can change something about it. Let's say the plate height is now going to be 8 foot 6. So everything is adjusted. Note that if you go in here and select a single stud, go into Entity Info, you'll see that it's actually a group rather than a component. So this isn't quite as efficient as it might be, but this is still a really excellent script. OK, let's say we want to have a gable end wall. We'll click on this button. All the defaults are set. I'll click OK. Click on this lower end point right here. Draw this over. Let's make it 20 feet wide. We have a gable end wall. Now I notice a collision problem right here between the two geometries. I'll select this wall and go into Wall Properties. Change justification to the other side. In this case, it moves from right to left. And I'll change the plate height to 8 foot 6. I really should make that change in the global properties so that every time I make a wall, I don't have to adjust this individually. We can go ahead and copy this wall as an object just using the Move tool. We can copy it from one side to the other. And I could change this so that its justification is on the other side to pop it inside there just like the other one. Now let's say we want a window. Click on this tool. And it says there's no selection, OK, or the selection is in a wall. This is an indication of how basically all these tools work. You need to pre-select one of the walls that you want to change. And then add a window to it by clicking the button. Now we can set in the window size and its relevant properties. Click OK, and then go down here on the base of the wall. Look at that colorful gizmo that appears. It's green and red, and it's showing you where that window would appear if I were to click. I'll click right here, and the window is instantly framed. If we don't like that, we can select the wall, go to Move Window, and then we can pick it up, move it over, click again, and all of the framing updates. It's really pretty impressive. In a similar way, you can add a door, and it gets framed as well. So pretty cool script by Steve Hurlbut. You can also come in here and create a roof. Before I do that, let me just add another wall over here. And the roof type can just be gable or shed, no gambrel. I'll go ahead and create that right here. And then it looks like I need to make some adjustments to that. So I'll go to the properties. I'll change the justification. And I'll change the plate height. And that's looking good. And then I'd like to make a roof. So I'll come over here and click this tool. And we have a choice of gable or shed. 
OK. I'll click the left corner and then the right corner. And then basically, we're drawing a rectangle. We'll come over here and click this point, and we instantly have a roof framed. So, again, an amazing script which is useful for framing. Although in most projects, I don't go to this level of detail, I would just represent the walls as faces. A real time saver if you're trying to figure out how many linear feet of wood you need for your structure or how you're going to frame some tricky intersections.